Hi, it's another beautiful day in Orange County, Southern California. But it's going to uh, get a little cloudy right now. Probably going to start raining. But today we have these trees here. This is a Brisbane box tree, Lophostomin confertus. Now it comes to us from Queensland, northeastern Australia, where they actually grow about 150 feet tall. And it gets its name Brisbane Box, since Brisbane is the capital of Queensland. Now these trees are really common in Southern California, along medians, sidewalks, retail centers like we have here, in our little uh, planter beds. And they're very easy to recognize because they're very smooth, reddish bark, almost like a eucalyptus here. And also, their leaves, like on this beautiful tree, they form on whorls at the end of the stems. See that? It's like a big, big whorl here. Now this tree's uh, also known by a couple other names, including brush box, Queensland box, Brisbane box, pink box, box scrub, and vinegar tree, also a Tristania conferta, or Tristania conferta, is described as a beautiful, refined, evergreen tree, broad-leafed, moderate to fast-growing, grows about two to three feet per year, and they reach usually 30 to 40 feet, sometimes up to 70 feet. Now the width is usually about half the height. It's got that really showy bark, comes from the Myrtaceae family, which includes eucalyptus, myrtles, guava, clovers, and the Java black plum tree. It's easily mistaken as a well-behaved eucalyptus tree because of its bark and the shape of the leaves. And as it matures, develops into this stately, dense, round to pyramid-shaped crown that provides good cooling shade and cover for birds. But I think this is more desirable than a eucalyptus, so if you have a choice, I think you should go with this Brisbane box. It's a perfect plant as a street tree, median, parking lot, lawn specimen, park tree, and even uh, just a screen. So let's talk about the trunk and the branches here. Of course, we have this reddish bark very smooth and at the bottom here we have this uh, brownish furrowed crunchy bark that peels off and reveals this beautiful beige smooth bark it's got deep roots so it's uh, friendly to your sidewalks little nearby sculptures it's got multiple trunks you see here that are usually pretty low to the ground when they branch out these uh, branches and stems and the branches are upright they don't droop it provides this really dense foliage for our beautiful shade tree and the leaves here we go I mentioned uh, they form in whorls at the end of the stems, like we have here. We'll pull one off, take a look at it. So they're elongated, lance shaped. They got this really defined yellow vein running up the middle to a little point at the end. The little glaucus on the bottom here, light green, and on top, they're a little bit more dark green. So if they have a lack of nutrition, okay? They'll sacrifice their chlorophyll and they'll actually turn a little bit yellow. And then if there's like dense fog or frost, they can also uh, turn a little brownish and even get little spots on them. So they can't get damaged if conditions are not just right. And these don't have flowers on them because this is January. But the flowers, we'll talk about them. The scientific name, Lophostomin confertus, 
comes from the words lophus or lophus, which means crest, stemen, which means stamen, and confertus, which means dense. So this tree here has flowers with crested stamens and dense foliage. Now the flowers they typically begin in June and July. They're very numerous, but they're also quite inconspicuous and easily looked over. But a very close look, they're very quite pretty and even a little very much feathery look. They're white flowers, about one inch across. They occur in clusters. Each cluster has between three and seven flowers, and each flower has five petals with wavy margins. And then the flowers, the stamens here, they're fused in bundles with anthers that extend outward to form delicate looking shaped feathers. They got a huge amount of pollen and nectar, attracts a lot of bees. In the late summer, the flowers develop into little uh, bell-shaped seed capsules that we'll find right here. Here we go. Little seed capsules on this tree here. And they'll form at the end of the stems. You see all these little brown balls. Now, they will fall on the ground down here, the leaves in the seed capsules, and they'll cause uh, quite a mess. And then if you step on them, they, um, they actually, they will hurt your foot if you're barefoot. So they're kind of messy. If you grow this at home, I wouldn't put it by your pool or by a water feature. And growing this at home, they prefer full sun. They're drought tolerant, but they do enjoy deep watering at least once a month in the summer. It does best in good soils. And newly planted trees, they need regular irrigation till they're established, which is about six months. Then you start to cut them back. Okay, here's got a, another beautiful specimen here. Wow, this looks great. They're very low maintenance. They love our California Mediterranean climate. Simple pruning. You just have to clean them up a little bit when they fall. Remove any dead limbs, any uh, discoloring leaves. And they do not have any insect or uh, any other known diseases. Wow. This is our Brisbane box tree. Little seed capsules up here. They're the ones that form the mess. That's it. Our Brisbane box tree. Hope you liked the video. Have a great day. Bye.